Hello, lovely internet strangers. In this video, I decided to give my thoughts on Charisma Carpenter's recent accusations against Joss Whedon, for which she has received support from Sarah Michelle Gellar and Michelle Trachtenberg, her fellow Buffy actresses, and recently from some male Buffy co-stars. I decided to comment because Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a show that I am extremely familiar with. I own the entire series on DVD. I have a Buffy t-shirt that I would have worn if it would not have clashed with my hat. Instead, I am wearing my Jessica Jones alien investigations t-shirt just to put me in the geek area. Buffy is a show that I watched before I was a feminist, while I was a feminist, and post being a feminist. So my thoughts and feelings about the show itself and about Joss Whedon have changed over time. And when I read these accusations from Charisma Carpenter, I got really annoyed and felt like I had something to say. So, for nearly two decades, I have held my tongue and even made excuses for certain events that traumatize me to this day. Joss Whedon abused his power on numerous occasions while working together on the sets of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. While he found his misconduct amusing, it only served to intensify my performance anxiety, disempower me, and alienate me from my peers. The disturbing incidents triggered a chronic physical condition from which I I still suffer. It is with a beating, heavy heart that I say I coped in isolation and at times destructively. I'm perplexed by her coming out with this statement of everything that happened between her and Joss Whedon and how he's awful, but she won't be specific about what chronic physical condition she still suffers from to this day because of what he did. I'm racking my brain trying to think of what chronic physical condition that could be. Is she saying she still suffers panic attacks? Did she develop fibromyalgia because the trauma was so deep? I would be very very curious to know what this chronic physical condition is. I'm also curious to know how she coped destructively. Is she referring to some sort of alcohol abuse problem, drug abuse problem, taking it out emotionally on the people around her? What are we talking about here? Last summer, when Ray Fisher publicly accused Joss of abusive and unprofessional behavior toward the cast and crew during reshoots on the Justice League set in 2017, it gutted me. Joss has a history of being casually cruel. Oh no, casually cruel. He has created hostile and toxic work environments since his early career. I know because I experienced it firsthand repeatedly. Like his ongoing passive aggressive threats to fire me, which wreaks havoc on a young actor's self-esteem, and callously calling me fat to colleagues when I was four months pregnant, weighing 126 pounds. He was mean and biting, disparaging about others openly, and often played favorites, pitting people against one another to compete and vie for his attention and approval. Okay, let's be clear here because she's gonna go on to link all of this into the Time's Up movement. She's talking about a hostile work environment, which is not something special to Hollywood actors. Plenty of people have experienced a hostile work environment. I know because I experienced a hostile work environment at one of my jobs, but we'll come back to that. He called me in for a sit down meeting to interrogate and berate me regarding a rosary tattoo I got to help me feel more spiritually grounded in an increasingly volatile work climate that affected me physically physically. Again, what is this physical effect? Are you having panic attacks? Are you having some sort of digestive issues? What the actual fuck are you talking about? Now, maybe he wasn't within his rights to berate her about the tattoo, but he was certainly within his rights to criticize her about it, get mad at her, chastise her, reprimand her, however you want to put it, because the nature of her job means that she has a contract to portray a character for a certain amount of time. Depending on what that contract says, she has very little control over how she looks during filming periods because they need to have character continuity. She doesn't say that he berated her insofar as he criticized her for being religious and expressing that on her body. I would just assume he got mad because she got a tattoo somewhere that would have to be covered and she didn't talk to anyone about it or take her job into consideration. Unless she gives details to the contrary, that's what I'm forced to infer. Joss intentionally refused multiple calls from my agents, making it impossible to connect with him to tell him the news that I was pregnant. Finally, once Joss was apprised of the situation, he requested a meeting with me. In that closed door meeting, he asked me if I was going to keep it and manipulatively weaponized my womanhood and faith against me. He proceeded to attack my character, mock my religious beliefs, accused me of sabotaging the show, and then unceremoniously fired me the following season once I gave birth. All right, was he an asshole for mocking her religious beliefs, as she says? Sure. Did he go about what he did in an asshole way? Kind of sounds like it, but he was certainly within his rights to be pissed at her. She doesn't share any details as to whether this was a whoops pregnancy versus say she had had a conversation with her partner about intentionally trying to get pregnant and then she did because she was a main cast member on a TV show. If you're planning to get pregnant, the responsible thing to do, the respectful thing to do is to go to the director, go to the production team and say, I'm ready to try getting pregnant. 
what can you do for my character? I'm going to need you to work around this because this happens plenty of times on TV shows. So yeah, you might've gotten pissed if you just all of a sudden were like, BTW, I'm pregnant. Now you have to deal with this. And people have been reading this tidbit about him asking her if she was going to keep it as him pressuring her to have an abortion. But that's just an inference that people are making because of their feminist bias or whatever. It's a perfectly legitimate question to say, okay, you're telling me that you're pregnant. Are you keeping this baby? How is this gonna affect my show? Maybe it's a callous thing to say without her acknowledging her own professional responsibilities, which are very unique. When you're a television actor, I find it hard to sympathize with her at all. I can acknowledge that Joss acted like an asshole in the way that he approached her, but he was within his rights to be angry about her irresponsibility. At six months pregnant, I was asked to report to work at 1 a.m. after my doctor recommended shortening my work hours due to long and physically demanding days and the emotional stress of having to defend my needs as a working pregnant woman, I began to experience Braxton Hicks contractions. It was clear to me the 1 a.m. call was retaliatory. Again, you have no evidence that this 1 a.m. call was retaliatory. It could be indifferent. Like you could say he was treating you like shit because he didn't care what your doctor said. He was just treating you like everyone else. This is the call time. She didn't say that she was the only person asked to report at 1 a.m. She just said she was asked to report at 1 a.m. and I doubt she was filming scenes just by herself. But she negates any agency that she has here, acting like she's just totally helpless in this situation. Just because she's an actress doesn't mean she is special. She's an employee. She has a job. She has an employer. And if your employer asks you to do things that are unreasonable, you can say no. You can tell them that's an unreasonable request and I'm not going to do it. You can fire me, but I'm not going to do it. The problem is she clearly wasn't willing to walk away. She clearly wasn't willing to get fired for refusing to meet his unreasonable demands. She could have been fired for standing up for herself and having a backbone, but instead she just kept going along with everything to keep her job and nothing came of it except her getting fired anyway. Back then I felt powerless and alone. With no other option, I swallowed the mistreatment and carried on. After all, I had a baby on the way and I was the primary breadwinner of my growing family. Unfortunately, all this was happening during one of the most wonderful time in new motherhood. All that promise and joy sucked right out and Joss was the vampire. Oh my God, like is this a Tumblr post or what? I looked it up and she had a child with someone she was pretty recently married to. I don't know if she means that he was also earning money, but he was earning less money than her or that he wasn't working and she was supporting him as well. That's kind of unclear and kind of surprising that an actress like her would be financially supporting a man. I just think that that detail is kind of interesting and glossed over. Despite the harassment, a part of me still sought his validation. And here is the fucking crux of the issue with all of these goddamn stories. She was still seeking this fucking asshole's validation. Why? What the fuck is wrong with you? You say that this man continually treated you like shit, passive aggressively threatened to fire you, called you fat in front of other people while you were pregnant. You say that he insinuated you should get an abortion and then fired you later when you didn't. And yet you still sought his validation. You need professional help. And luckily, as we'll see in this paragraph, she did get some, although obviously not enough because she is still traumatized by these events 20 years later. I made excuses for his behavior and repressed my own pain. I have even stated publicly at conventions that I'd work with him again. Why the fuck would you do that? Only recently, after years of therapy and a wake up call from the Time's Up movement, do I understand the complexities of this demoralized thinking. It is impossible to understand the psyche without enduring the abuse. Our society and industry vilify the victims and glorify the abusers for their accomplishments. The onus is on the abused with an expectation to accept and adapt to be employable. No accountability on the transgressor who sails on unscathed, unrepentant, remorseless. Yeah, and you know why? Because people like you work with these assholes and then never say anything about it until 20 goddamn years later when that person's career is like pretty much over or at least it's well past the peak and they have had the opportunity to be abusive to tons of other people who you did nothing to help and whose behavior you condoned by not speaking up about it and by saying publicly that you would still work with that person. And I wanna make a separation between abusing your power and being an abuser. Did the man abuse his power by being an asshole all the time? Yeah, Joss got to be an asshole all the time and get away with it because he was a director and people loved his work. He was super successful. People wanted to be in his orbit so they could be successful. So yeah, he abused his power, but saying mean things to her does not make him her abuser. Creating a hostile work environment does not make him her abuser. Look, I worked at a job where my boss created a hostile work environment. They were texting me all the time outside of work hours, telling me to 
do work related things. They set me and my coworkers up to fail with completely unreasonable expectations. My boss had no fucking clue what they were doing in way over their head. Instead of acknowledging that, took it out on us. My stress levels at that job were so bad that toward the end, I legitimately thought I was going to have a heart attack. But does that make my former boss my abuser? No. And part of the problem was that I refused to quit, which is the same problem that Charisma Carpenter had. She refused to threaten to quit, or at least she does not say that she made any threats to quit after his repeatedly abusive, as she puts it, behavior. And I'm sorry, but if it's really that awful, you can get another job. Maybe it's not gonna be as cushy of a job as this one is. Maybe you won't be able to keep yourself and your husband and your upcoming baby in the lifestyle to which you've become accustomed, but you can fucking hustle and figure it out. Just like everyone else in the goddamn world. These memories and more have weighed on my soul like bricks for nearly half of my life. I wish I had said something sooner. I wish I had the composure and courage all those years ago, but I muted myself in shame and conditioned silence. See, she's saying that she has courage now, like she wishes she had the courage before and she didn't, but she has it now. I'm sorry, but it's not courageous to come out after 20 years to tell people that working with this person was awful after they've basically had their entire career after there've been these movements where these women came out and yelled about this person and that person. There's no courage in that. She felt it was safe now. Being courageous is doing something that's scares you, doing something that could bring harm to you, but you do it anyway because you believe that it's the right thing to do. What she's doing right now is not courageous in the slightest. And it's an insult to people who have spoken up under conditions that could have led to them getting fired or blacklisted, who did have the courage, who had the integrity to put doing the right thing over career longevity. With tears welling, I feel an overwhelming sense of responsibility to Ray and others for remaining private about my experience with Joss and the suffering it has caused me. It is a abundantly evident that Joss has persisted in his harmful actions, continuing to create wreckage in his wake. My hope now, by finally coming forward about these experiences, yes, please do tell us the fucking point, is to create space for the healing of others who I know have experienced similar serialized abuses of power. How the fuck is you talking about the fact that Joss was a dick to you 20 fucking years ago, going to help other people heal? Hearing you talk about Joss being a dick to you and suffering through a hostile work environment Environment. Sure as shit doesn't help me heal from dealing with my toxic work environment. This is just part of her own fucking personal therapy session and her need to feel relevant because she's not starring in anything anymore and her need to feel relevant because it's COVID and acting jobs are limited. Please, someone pay attention to me. Like, whatever you think of me too in the Time's Up movement. Those movements were making accusations about sexual harassment, about sexual assault. This woman's over here talking about how their boss was an asshole. What the fuck does that have to do with those movements? Like, I'm not a fan of those movements, but shut the fuck up. Recently, I participated in Warner Media's Justice League investigation because I believe Ray to be a person of integrity who is telling the truth. His firing as Cyborg in The Flash was the last straw for me. Although I am not shocked, I am deeply pained by it. It troubles and saddens me that in 2021, professionals still have to choose between whistleblowing in the workplace and job security. Well, nothing's ever going to fucking change if people in your situation don't say anything. Whatever you think about the accusations, at least Ray Fisher had the courage to come out relatively soon to when the shit actually happened versus waiting two decades and then being like, now I can finally share my truth. It has taken me so long to muster the courage to make this statement publicly. Again, you're not fucking courageous. The gravity of it is not lost on me. As a single mother whose family's livelihood is dependent on my craft, I'm scared. Despite my fear about its impact, on my future, I can no longer remain silent. This is overdue and necessary. It is time. Oh, excuse me bitch. You know that making these kinds of accusations is exactly the kind of thing that will give you positive attention and career longevity because it's the right moment now. This is not the height of Joss Whedon's career. His career was already on the way out. Nobody gives a fuck if you're shitting on Joss Whedon. No one's gonna be like, oh, Charisma Carpenter was shitting on Joss Whedon and now we're not gonna cast her as the lead in this TV show. No one's gonna cast you as the lead in this TV show probably because you're old and Hollywood likes to cast super hot young 
young, nubile, fresh faces for their TV shows. I love that closing part. This is overdue and necessary. It's time. It's that whole attitude for these people. I'm making a difference. I know I waited two decades to say anything, so this person got away with all the stuff that they were ever gonna get away with, but I'm helping. Anyway, as is typical with these things nowadays, she has gotten very vague statements of support from fellow Buffy co-stars. The first person to back her up was Sarah Michelle Gellar. She posted on Instagram the following. While I am proud to have my name associated with Buffy Summers, I don't want to be forever associated with the name Joss Whedon. I am more focused on raising my family and surviving a pandemic currently, so I will not be making any further statements at this time. But I stand with all survivors of abuse and am proud of them for speaking out. Like what the actual fuck? She doesn't say, I had similar experiences. I remember Charisma talking to me about this when it happened, nothing. And then she justifies the fact that she's not gonna make any further statements because she's really busy with her family and surviving COVID. Then why the fuck did you even say anything? This is a totally empty statement. And then following Sarah Michelle Gellar's statement, reposted it and said, I am brave enough now as a 35 year old woman to repost because this must be known. That's how she wrote it. William Shatner from OG Star Trek style. As a teenager with his not appropriate behavior, very not appropriate. So now people know what Joss did. Do not give me a fucking pop-up about the Latin X experience. This is the last fucking thing I want to know about. Fuck you. Go away. Where was I before I was interrupted with this fucking SJW pop-up bullshit? The last comment I want to make on this was there is a rule saying he's not allowed in a room alone with Michelle again. Okay, again, super vague statement. What do you mean he wasn't allowed in a room with you? Why? What happened for you to make this rule? She's the only one who's come out with something where there could be a story behind it. Like he made lewd comments toward her when she was underage or tried to touch her, something. But no, there's nothing here. And finally, we have the white knights riding in to save the day. Male Buffy stars back Charisma Carpenter, others alleging misconduct by Joss Whedon. On Sunday, Boreanaz wrote a response to Carpenter's tweet. I'm here for you to listen and support you, proud of your strength. I know you're there for me, David, replied Carpenter. I appreciate all you've done to demonstrate that support privately as well. If you really gave a shit, when you were on Angel together and you told him about the way that Joss was treating you, he would have stood up and said, you need to stop treating her this way or I'm gonna quit and you won't have a fucking show. Obviously he didn't do that. But what really matters is that he responded to her tweet telling her that he's proud of her strength for speaking out about this after 20 years. And then at the bottom of the article, they mentioned the other white knights. On Saturday, Adam Bush, Tom Lank, and Danny Strong, who all played villains in season six of Buffy, joined the ranks of supporters on Twitter. I support Charisma, Sarah, Amber, and Michelle, wrote Bush. I admire their courage and leadership. The truth is powerful and it prevails. I didn't hear anything about Amber Benson speaking out. Maybe she did. I don't give enough of a shit to go looking for it right now. But in case you hadn't been following the incident, this is the overview. Back when I was originally a feminist, it was not good to be a male feminist. So when Joss came out and was calling himself a feminist and calling his show feminist, it was highly suspect. It was well understood in feminist circles at that time, say like 2011 to 2014, that saying you were a feminist as a man was just a way to cover your shitty behavior. It was like, we see the smoke, where's the fire? Somehow it shifted to the point that I would see OkCupid profiles where women were saying they were looking for a male feminist and I was like, ew, why? I'm just briefly showing this article to make it clear that women talking about Joss Whedon being shitty is nothing new, but that Charisma Carpenter's accusations are totally nothing when you compare it to what his ex-wife said back in 2017 that he was a hypocrite who was preaching feminist ideals because he spent 15 years cheating on her starting when he was on the set of Buffy, hiding these affairs physical and emotional over the years, completely taking away her agency as a woman that he would purport to protect because she had no idea what he was doing behind her back. And she thought he was one of the good guys, one of the feminist guys fighting for women, etc. But he wasn't. He was a big hypocrite. He was a piece of shit. This information was already out there years ago. So frankly, I find Charisma Carpenter coming out and being like, he was mean to me, kind of not that impactful. Now, these are two separate issues 
issues, how you conduct yourself in your marriage, and how you conduct yourself professionally. Obviously, Charisma Carpenter is making accusations about his professional conduct, fine, but she's using the language of the Me Too and the Time's Up movement to give what she's saying more weight. Actually, Gal Gadot came out and said that she had her own experiences with Joss Whedon, but that she dealt with them at the time and it was handled to her satisfaction. And I'm like, wow, someone who takes responsibility for shit, confronts shit when it happens and is willing to fucking report it and have it dealt with. So it is a thing that you can do, even if you are a woman and no one's gonna take you seriously and you're just gonna lose your job, blah, blah, blah. Obviously that's not always the case. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to rant about this because I've been a fan of Buffy for years, despite its numerous flaws as a show. And I've kept up with all the gossip and news about Joss Whedon over the years because he has called himself a male feminist. And so I was obviously aware of that during my feminist days. And there were lots of debates in the feminist circles about Buffy and which parts of it were or weren't feminist, etc. And that has changed in feminist circles over time. But none of this shit is going to change until the people who are being treated this way are willing to stand up for themselves and risk losing their jobs and go work for someone else. Do what you want to do to make your money or further your career or whatever, but don't whine about it 20 years later and act like you're brave when all that you did, if we're going off of everything you said about this person being true, was let other young vulnerable actors be treated like shit by this person. But no, you're so fucking courageous. Let's applaud for you. Anyway, that's my rant. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I hope to have more content for you very soon.